Hello everyone, and thanks for checking out my double review of the Brooks Hyperion Max and the Adidas Adios 8. As always, remember your LSD runners, which stands for like, subscribe, and ding the bell for notifications. Don't forget to share this video with your buddies too. Thanks. So I'm about to go for what I think is my fourth run in the Brooks Hyperion Max. Um, I've done a, a few, I guess, quote-unquote easy runs that were faster than easy pace. I've done one short track workout, and then I'm going to do another track workout today. It's going to be kind of a tune-up workout before Ultimate Runner, but it's going to be in the rain, uh, and I really kind of test out, want to test out the wet traction on this shoe. I know with the Brooks Hyperion Tempo um, and with the Hyperion Elite, um, Wet traction was a was a big negative for them, but this looks like it's it's hopefully going to be a little bit better, which would be more useful for me as a training shoe, um, and that's kind of kind of how I'm using it as an unplated workout shoe like fast trainer. So yeah, we'll do that and maybe another couple more runs before we put a review together. <laughs> Just did the track workout, just kind of an easy ladder workout, not really pushing the paces. Tune up before ultimate runner. So on a wet track and this wet asphalt, I'm getting surprisingly good grip for a Brooks shoe to be honest. Like I said, the Hyperion Tempo and Hyperion Elite 2, which I've run in before, would be slick and even just the least damp conditions. But these have a good tack to the rubber. I was only really feeling any slip while doing some strides and getting towards a near all out pace, which I wouldn't really be doing in these shoes anyway. So good verdict on the grip. Hey, Con. Check this out here. It's really pretty, isn't it? Nice black color with these white marks in all the right places, just like someone I know. Right? You excited to try it out? Well, you may not be, but I am. Adidas Adios 8. Going back to the Adios. It's been a while. Forgive the poor lighting here, the sun is still coming up, a little bit of light on the horizon. Uh, first run in the uh, Adios 8 right now. I'm on my way to meet Derek and Anthony and I'm running a little bit late, so I'm having to run a little bit faster, which is fun because it's two days since I did the Ultimate Runner, actually more like 36 hours ago. So it's a good thing these are fast day shoes. All right. Back to it. All right, I'm one mile from Anthony's house and just over eight minutes before I need to meet him and Derek there. So I'm no longer running behind and I can talk a little. Um, four miles in to a 10 mile run. This isn't, I think, the kind of run I would normally take the audio state on because this is really more of a base pace run. When I say base, I mean the pace you would do all of your non-workout days and most of your long runs, unless there's race pace thrown in. So I can tell, like most shoes intended for a race day or a workout, it doesn't shine here, but it doesn't feel bad. Kind of like the Adios of old, as far as usage. The feel is a little bit different. I'll get into that when I'm not running and uh, when I have better filming conditions. Might be kind of hard to see now, but six miles left in the run, I'm going to be racing a thunderstorm on the way back home. So I might get in some impromptu speed in it. All right, just left the other guys 
got some nice light in the sky. Looks like I'm gonna beat the thunderstorm home. So no need to push it. Um, I've got nine miles in these shoes right now. And it feels like anything faster than easy pace they're gonna be pretty good for. Best for workout days. Even kind of a fast easy pace, a, a DFE pace. DFE, by the way, stands for Derek Fake Easy. Or, more appropriately, Dumb F Easy. Because it does no good other than looking good on Strava. Anyway, I do like the look of these. Very classic Adidas look. Me and Ed Bud, man. Similar aesthetics, aesthetic choices. All right. I just like this stretch of greenway. It's good scenery, it's close to home. There for a second. Anyway, um, I am liking it a lot more at the end of the run than I was at the beginning of the run. I liked it at the beginning of the run. I felt like it had some get up and go, but you know, it's a non-plated shoe and it's, you know, not a super thick slab, a super foam. So it's not one of those that will just give you that bouncy return right away without putting anything into it. It's more like, like I said, a traditional racing flat. It's going to rely on you to be the speed, but it will certainly stay out of your way when you do that. Um, <clears throat> the grip, the continental rubber outsole, fantastic. And if you know me as a runner, you know that outsole grip is definitely something I place a lot of importance on um, in a shoe especially a fast day shoe. And uh, I, I did run through some wet areas, uh, some areas that just always have standing water, and it felt like I was not running through water at all other than hearing the splish splash. Just good grip, Adidas is known for that. Um, so yeah, I will take this shoe to the beach with me, which I'm leaving for the beach today, Heidi and I are, and uh, do a workout or two in it before I get my final thoughts together. Good morning. Heidi and I are at the beach for a few days, so um, I'm about to take the Adios 8 on another run um, down this road here where it's pretty straight and flat. Maybe see if I can get a workout in it. Uh, yeah. So I'm warming up right now. What's on the schedule for today is three by eight minutes kind of a threshold pace with two minute recovery and then six by one minute on one minute off and that'll be more of a vo2 max effort so i don't know the way i'm feeling today it might be more of a 5k pace rather than a 3k pace but it'll be a good opportunity to put the audios eight through a few different paces and see how it does as a workout shoe all right, 15 minutes warm up. Got ready to dip into that first LT interval. Eight minutes on, starting now. Rep number one, about a 6.10 pace for eight minutes. That's about what I've been doing for my one hour-ish races. So that's okay. A little bit of a headwind. Gonna try and milk this recovery a little. Might run by the aquarium. Just starting rep number two. Rev number two. 605 pace. I don't know how accurate that is, but I'll take it. 
I uh, turned around five minutes into that one at the aquarium. So no more headwind, but the tailwind is going the same pace as my tempo. So I've just got stagnant air now. I don't know which is worse. Oh well, it's not supposed to be easy, right? Just started tempo rep number three. Heading back towards where I started. That's tough. <sighs> Hold on a second. Catch my breath first. Pause. I had to take about a 35 second walk break. Was trying to get that one at least as fast as the first one. It was close. Last average pace I saw was 6.11. I'll take it. They average out to a pretty good pace. 6.10 for the first eight miles. 6.05. And then 6.11. All right. I'm gonna take another minute here jogging before I do the miniatures. All right, now I'm not looking forward to these, but it's time. Six by one minute on, one minute off. Go. Two of them done. I'm pausing the watch. I'm gonna cheat here and take 30 seconds before I resume the recovery. It's a tough day. It's mid 70s, high humidity. And this is a tough workout. All right, that's it, Chaz, come on. About to start number four of the miniatures. There it is. About halfway through number five now. Want it to be done. All right, so I cut my cool down a little bit short. Normally I'd like to try and get in 15 minutes or at least 10. And I think I might have gotten in five or six. But it's pretty warm today, pretty humid. Okay, so it's been a few hours since I got that run done. And uh, now that I can speak without hyperventilating, um, pretty happy with how the workout went considering how hot it was today and, and how humid. Uh, glad I wasn't doing it right now. You know, at about two o'clock in the afternoon heat but it's a beautiful day at the beach anyway um on the warm-up you know similar to how i was on uh you know the base run i did in the adios eight uh, i was thinking ah, well we'll see how this goes there's you know nothing wrong with it you know it's a workout shoot it wasn't until i really dug into those uh tempo intervals and then into those miniatures after the tempo intervals that i it came alive i was like yes this is what this shoe is designed for um I uh, was averaging about, you know, 610s, 605s on those uh, LT intervals, and that's that's pretty good because that's about what my one-hour race pace is. A lot of traffic here in Carolina Beach, um, so that was appropriate. I'm happy with that on a hot day. Some of it in the head of it. Uh, the miniatures I was doing between 540 and 520 pace, which uh, I think is target. That's about right, especially after doing right after doing those tempo intervals. Um, but yeah, um, this shoe really kind of comes alive at those paces. Uh, I think that's what it's designed for. It'll be interesting when I do a marathon pace run uh, a little bit later this week in a couple days in this shoe, the Brooks Hyperion Max, which is kind of what I'm uh, doing as a comparison to this one here. It is kind of apples and oranges, and I'll talk about that later in the review as I'm, as I'm getting my my thoughts around it, wrapping my thoughts around it, uh, but I think uh, that both of these you could count as unplated workout shoes, um, and I will talk about why that's important too. I think there are some other shoe tubers who, who think that's an important category as well. Anyway, uh, on to the next run, right? On the docket today, 55 to 60 minute run with about 25 minutes at marathon pace. Which, I don't know if that's gonna be closer to 6.30, 6.25, maybe 6.35, we'll see. 
uh, doing it in the Brooks Hyperion Max. Shrimp, live minnows, cut and mullet. I know some people would have to get a haircut before going in there, I guess. <laughs> All right, 15 minutes in. That should be the warm up. I suppose it do be time to drop, drop into the marathon effort. 25 minutes starting now. about six and a half minutes into pace and that's about a mile so just over a mile settling into a 630 average shoes feel smooth i don't exactly feel smooth kind of feeling that workout from a couple days ago we'll see what i can maintain here all right i've just finished the marathon pace run and i'm just kind of walking around outside of the uh airbnb uh, so I can let this sweat drip off of me. It's very humid today. Um, I tried to get some more footage during the pace run, but I'm an awful cameraman and I messed a lot of it up. So I'll just talk about it now. Um, yeah, so 25 minutes at marathon pace or marathon effort. It was actually harder than marathon effort in order to get what I wanted for marathon pace. Uh, first half of it was around 6.30 before I kind of used a park to turn around and then the average overall by the end was 626 which means i was negative splitting the second half i must have done in the low 620 622 um which makes me feel good for vanity's sake but you know this far out from chicago as difficult as it was feeling if i were to put my coach's hat on i probably would have said um it's better to you know train at that 630 635 pace and keep it feeling sustainable um, rather than try and force my body into a, a pace that is a little too hard right now. Uh, goal is 250 at Chicago, sub 250, and that's a high 620s pace. We'll see how that goes. Anyway, enough about the workout. Um, shoes, right? Uh, Brooks Hyperion Max felt really smooth at marathon pace and they didn't feel too bad at the uh warm-up pace which is about an eight minute mile either of course i think they want to run faster uh both of the shoes i brought on this trip i actually brought three pairs of shoes but two of them that i'm really uh double reviewing and comparing uh both of those shoes the adios 8 and the hyperion max uh of course do better at faster paces um the adios 8 being more of a race day shoe that you could do some training in and I think the Hyperion Max being more of a training shoe uh, meant for faster paces that you could also do some racing in. And uh, I'll kind of do a deep dive into both of those shoes and what I think about them compared to we each other and uh, some other shoes uh, once I get my thoughts about me. But I'm gonna get all of this sweat off me. All right. All right, everyone. So I'm back from vacation and I'm gonna wrap up this uh, shoe double review comparison. And uh, like I have said, the two shoes that I am uh, talking about are the Brooks Hyperion Max and the Adidas uh, Adios 8 non-pro version. Um, and I talked about how these are both unplated fast day shoes. And I bring that up uh, for an, an important reason. Unplated, I don't think you should do all your runs in plated shoes. We all know that super shoes with carbon plates and some of the you know semi super training shoes like the endorphin speed three or a whole endorphin speed line have uh, plastic or p-bax plates um they're great they make you run fast <laughs> well they don't make you run fast but they help you run fast they're awesome to run in but um i don't think you should run in them all the time i think you should run in some shoes that don't provide any extra assistance and also uh where you are in charge of your own biomechanics. Anytime you have some kind of governing force in there, like a carbon fiber plate or even a PBAX plate um, that has the uh, 
opportunity to change your biomechanics in some way or have your body do things it normally wouldn't do if it didn't have that plate. Uh, the Doctors of Running. It's a great YouTube channel. They also have a, a great uh, blog. They, they are kind of the ones I've been um, reading to kind of cement my, uh, my opinion on that, actually, uh, if I can get my words out straight. So, um, obviously, there will be some comparisons I have to, you know, some plated trainers, namely the endorphin speed. Uh, but also I want to try and uh, shed some light on some non-plated trainers, non-plated racers. Um, as I was saying when I was running in the Adios 8, uh, when I really got up to speed, it felt like it was me providing the speed. The shoe did not get in my way. It felt like the Adios of old, the Adios 1, the Adios 2, even a little bit like the Adios Boost, except a little bit different. You could still tell that the uh, Light Strike Pro is a, a different flavor of cushion um, than the old, uh, I forget what they call the EVA that Adidas used to use, and it's certainly different than Boost as well, it's lighter. And the Light Strike 2.0 is an improvement over Light Strike 1. Uh, it's not as, you know, brickish, not as hard, not as harsh, because uh, Light Strike 1.0 was a dud. It was the most overrated foam since Revlite, in my opinion. Um, but yes, Definitely, this shoe looks fantastic. I love the aesthetic, the classic aesthetic of it. Um, and it will hold up for a while. That outsole is not going anywhere. It's the grippiest outsole of, of some, might be one of the grippiest shoes that I have. And um, I think it's just gonna, there's nothing to it. You know, there's a fully gusseted tongue, but other than that, you know, it's a almost a transparent upper there. It's gonna be just for putting in some fast work. Um, and I would say only fast work. I wouldn't do any base runs in this. You know, it's, it doesn't feel horrible at base pace, but it just, it feels like, why am I wearing this shoe when I have other shoes I could wear? Um, by contrast, the Hyperion Tempo, um, probably one of the best fitting uppers of all the shoes I have. That's something Brooks has always done well for me is have a good fitting shoe. Um, there's not too much to it. The upper is kind of one layer. There's just enough padding in the heel collar there. It's got the little elf flare too. And there's enough structure, but I don't really think about the structure. I really kind of forget the shoes on my foot when I'm running at pace. And when I step into it, it feels comfortable. I'm really just thinking about how the midsole um, interacts with me, which I think is the sign of a good performance shoe. Now this uh, DNA Flash, it is a supercritical EVA, um, so I think it's nitrogen infused, very similar to the um, Skechers Hyperburst phone in the Razer 3 and in the whole Razer line. This is the Razer Plus right here. Some of my favorite shoes. When the Razer 3 first came out, this is probably my fourth pair, I think it was my favorite shoe at the time. And I think I like the Razer Plus even better. There have since been some shoes that have kind of taken that place. Um, but as far as trainers go, I still love to, to bring this out for track days, for easy days, whatever. Um, this shoe is like a super Razer which is a good thing. I love this geometry where the heel gets out of your way there. It's a nice, even rocker. Not as much as some of the, you know, Saucony line shoes have been known to have, but it is a pretty smooth rocker, a good outsole. We talked about that, good coverage, good grip, but not completely covered. So there's still some flexibility and uh, still some, some, some softness there, but it's gonna last a while. However, this shoe, um, while it's a lot more versatile and a lot more comfortable, uh, you're going to pay a lot more for it. It's $170 full price, whereas the Adios 8 is $130 full price. I did not pay full price for either of these shoes, by the way, just uh, to disclose that. So if you want something that can do a little bit of everything, this is a good value, and I think it would last a, a while, but it's still not something that I would reach for to do my easy miles. I would do my easy miles in it if I had to pack one shoe for a vacation, I might pack this one, but probably not over another option that I'll talk about in just a second. Um, of course, I've got three generations of the Saucony Endorphin Speed here. Um, one, two, and three. And this is a do-everything kind of shoe. 
the, the PBEX foam is so responsive. I could do slow days in it, fast days in it, workouts, track workouts, tempo runs, long runs, whatever. The endorphin speed has it covered. However, it does have that PBEX plate in there. And while I think PBEX doesn't alter your biomechanics as much as say a carbon fiber plate might, um, I do think that it adds some rigidity, which sometimes I, I want my foot to do the work. That's also a reason why I would still consider getting the Adios 8, even if you have something like the Takumi Sen 8 or 9. Um, the Takumi Sen, it's full, um, I'm losing my words, full Light Strike Pro. So it's got a more substantial, better, and more responsive midsole. Of course, you're going to pay for that uh, unless you get it on one of Adidas's many sales. But it also has those um, fiberglass rods there, which sort of like a, a PBAX plate or, or a carbon infused plate are going to add a little bit of rigidity, add a little bit of spring, a little bit of energy return. And I think if you want to train in something where you are doing the work, then you won't necessarily want to do all of your runs in this one, even all of your fast days, maybe some key workouts though. So, um, I'm kind of going off on this. Great value for pretty much any fast day when it comes to tempo run or track day, uh, especially in any kind of inclement weather. Uh, even marathon pace, I think this would do pretty well. And if you had to do an easy run in it, that's fine. Also very light, racing flat light. Good all around shoe, does everything except for recovery days. Um, it will kind of make you go faster on your easy run days, but it could handle most types of workouts and it's gonna feel comfortable. However, paying more for this. I think if you wanted a balance of both of these shoes for a good price, um, where you could do a little bit of everything in, ma a jack of all trades, master of none. Let me, it's out of my reach, hold on. Then the Kinvara 14 is a good consideration. It's not gonna be quite as poppy uh, as either of those two, although it is pretty poppy. It's not gonna have as good a grip Although I haven't had any troubles with this, I haven't been running in too rainy of weather. It's got a nice breathable upper. It's cheap, you know, it's closer to the Adios, Pro, uh, excuse me, the Adios 8 in, um, in price. Um, it looks good. I think uh, if I were, I was driving to the beach, but if I were gonna fly someplace and I wasn't racing anywhere and only bringing one shoe, I'm gonna go with the Convara 14. That being said, I, I'm gonna keep running in both the Adios 8 and the Hyperion Max because they're both fun shoes. And uh, I think they will always have a place in my rotation. Um, so yeah, that is my double review of the Brooks Hyperion Max and the Adidas Adios 8. Thank you for watching all the way to the end. Don't forget to LSD, which could be long, slow distance, or it could be like, subscribe or share, and uh, ding the bell for notifications. <laughs> Thanks, everyone. <laughs>